All right, welcome back, folks. I um, actually didn't plan to make a uh, third video in the Advanced Control series, but uh, the creator of Minimator actually watched one of my videos and dropped a couple notes for me to add, so I did. Um, his name is David Norgren, so shout out to him. Thanks for watching, and thanks for pointing those things out to me. So I will start by showing you some of the things I missed. We'll just do it on... Uh, my Swedish ship animation. <laughs> so if you've noticed, I've taken out a couple of my camera keyframes in between here. And the reason I did that is because I just wanted to smooth it out. I wanted to make it a little bit more complete. So if you notice there, um, the camera didn't flip around to look at Mr. Ski Dude here. So one thing I did not know is that with your camera keyframes, if you click on these, they actually have their own options here on the right hand side, like you would a keyframe of a person to change their position, rotation, or whatever. Um, so part of the options here is you have your transition, tempos, and overlay. Um, first off, I will start with overlay. Uh, let's just add an overlay here, overlay color, pink, and you change the alpha. So this is across the whole screen, it's not a specific object, but across your whole video. Um, and it works like any other thing, so if I add that to that frame, press play, it'll slowly work into it, and get it. Um, and because I don't have it added to the rest of the thing, it's not going to keep it on there. So we're going to take that off. The next one is... Um, tempo speed. You can actually change the tempo per keyframe, meaning I've got it at 15, so I can either watch my whole animation in 15, or I can speed up and slow down my animation depending on the camera frame. So if you'll notice, it goes slow here, and it goes to there. Now, you're probably thinking, well, you know, that's a pretty big transition here. That's why it's going so slow. But I've actually turned this one down to 22%. So if I speed this back up to 100%, which is the default setting, and press play, it goes a lot faster and flips around. And I'll show you the difference. Slow this back, back down to 21. Press play, and it's slow all the way around and smooth. And then I have the instant camera switch. Um, I put it from this one to this one, so it's instant here, meaning it's not going to flip around. It just instantly, boom, hits him on this camera frame. Um, I've also slowed down a couple more tempos throughout the animation. As you'll see here in this sidekick, it's slow motion right there, speeds up, slow motion as he hits the back. Now the way it's working is, let's see, so this one's at 100%. This one's at 18%, this one's back at 100. So it starts at 100 and it has to slow down to 18 by the time it makes it here. And from 18 it has to speed back up to 100 by the time it makes it here. So that's essentially how that's working. And then you've got your normal ease in, ease out, instant transitions like we went over in the second video. Um, another cool option, uh, let's see actually turn off the camera and we'll start here with the beginning so we'll zoom out so we can see both characters so as you can see by the time here you know his arm raises and his arm raises um, you know this is gonna be a little hard to do because I've already animated them so we'll just hurry and do it here we'll add two Steve's Actually, we'll add three, but we're going to make one of them a skeleton. We're actually going to go for four and make one of them a zombie. So we'll add our keyframes. And like we learned in the previous videos, we can actually jump to camera. Look a little bit over. Jump to camera. Look a little bit over camera, and last but not least, Mr. Zombie, jump to camera. So, 
We've moved them all. Now let's say we're doing the synchronized dance like I was talking in the one before. What I showed you before isn't wrong, but I've actually been shown a quicker way to do it. Um, so you can move. That's not the one we want to move. We can move his arm and then copy, come to this guy, and then paste um, to do that. But something easier that was mentioned to me by uh, David was selecting multiple keyframes. So as you've noticed, when, when you have a keyframe selected, it's got a hollow point in the middle. You can actually click and drag, make your box like you would in any program to select multiple ones. Now they all have hollow dots. Or you can select one, hold control, and select as many more as you want on different parts of the timeline at different lengths, different whatever. You can select multiple ones. So now, oh, that's funny. So you can also remove multiple ones at once. So let's hurry and move these guys back. Wasn't thinking there. All right. Position jump. <laughs> Whoops. Gotta have the whole body selected. All right. So one more time here. All. Oh, here we go. Jump the camera. Jump the camera. Uh, jump by to the camera, and as always, jump to the camera. All right, so we're back. So let's select our multiple friends here. Now you'll notice this isn't going to work if you're using different body models. So it's actually, oh, well, yes and no. It's it's going to let me move their bodies, the whole body, but say I want to raise the arms, it's not going to let me pick their arms anywhere in here because of Mr. Skeleton. So let's take him out of the party. Let's select, actually let's see if it works with Zombie and Steve's. No. So it's got to be the same character model um, as far as this goes model here. Even though the Zombie and Steve are the exact same size and everything, it's not going to let you animate those multiples. So I can actually select the two Steves, click their arm, and voila! It moves both arms at once. Now I could have one of these. Oh, if you have both selected, it's going to move them all. I could have one of these further down here and still select this. The difference here is going to be when I press play, um, Actually need multiple. So if I have multiple ones selected, sorry, kind of lost my train of thought there. I can do that. Now, um, to add it over to Mr. Skeleton and Mr. Zombie, um, I just have to do the copy, select him, paste, copy our Y go here and paste and I would do the same thing for the zombie so it's just a quicker way to m animate multiple characters at once by just control clicking or shift dragging however you want to do it as far as and it's not just for animating body movements it's any selection any change in here so if I change the scale it's going to change both of those if I change the alpha it'll change both of those if I change the position No, it doesn't look. Well, let's see. Jump to camera. Now it jumped to camera and it put it stacked them on each other. So that's a, if you're moving multiple characters, you probably won't want to move them like that because it's going to stack them. Unless you're just trying to get them all to one spot at once. Anyway, I'm still learning with this. Um, I thought you guys would benefit from this as well. So just as a recap, we've got our camera um, keyframes where you can speed up the tempo individually, the transition, make it linear instant, um, and as far as multiple selections, it will change the options of everything. So some options do work with multiple body models selected as far as the scale goes, the alpha, oh, there's our other Steve, it's because we don't have him selected here. 
Yeah, whole body rotation, not specific body parts, and things like that. And your transitions. So, there you go. That's uh, just a quick advanced videos number three that I thought I would add to it after the tips I received from David. And uh, enjoy, rate, subscribe, and thumbs up. As always, thanks for tuning in.